recording. All right, very good. So now we'll start and welcome, welcome to everyone. So thrilled you guys could be on tonight. Um, whether you already have your iTeraCare device, whether you're thinking about it, whether you're not sure, we welcome you all. We're really excited. And I was thrilled because Dr. Um, Kim Caparelli, and I'm just going to call her Kim, Pardon, I hope that that's not disrespectful to the doctor part. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, she and I have been dear, dear friends for many years. And um, when she was excited to try the wand and then um, was getting great results with her patients, I was so thrilled that she agreed to come on. And we're planning to do this as an educational series so that we really start to learn more and more just creative ways, you guys, to use this device. So um, let me go ahead right now. I'm going to um, introduce Dr. Kim to you, and then we're just going to go right into the presentation. Now, before I do that, though, so that I don't forget, I do want to do the disclaimer, right? Have to get the disclaimer in, and the disclaimer is, you know, this is not a medical device. The Care Health Blower is considered a physiotherapy device. It is not a medical device. It does not cure anything. And that is the truth, okay? It's really there to help give the body what the body needs to heal itself. So even when we get into Q&A, please refrain from asking, does this heal my diabetes? Okay, it's not healing anything. So we'll have to be careful in how we phrase that, et cetera. So I just wanted to make that disclaimer. All right, so if anybody is out there ready with that, <laughs> we're good to go. So Dr. Kim Caporelli is, are you guys ready for this? She has a doctorate. She's not just an acupuncturist, although that's fabulous in and of itself, but she's also a, has a doctorate in acupuncture and Chinese medicine. So she has an incredible base of knowledge. Before that, she was actually a speech pathologist. She's been in the healing arts for a long time, many moons, right, Kim? Many moons. Right, right, many moons. <laughs> many moons. So with that, I'm so excited to introduce Dr. Kim to you. Um, and Kim, I'm just going to start. I'm going to turn it over to you. Love to know, like, when you first got the wand, what were you thinking? How is it working? And maybe giving a few secrets on how you're using it for your patients. And maybe we can, you know, get some of that information for ourselves. So take it away. Okay, great. So um, I think that I just initially looked at the, um, if you can flip that up, the basic a protocol. That's what I looked at. I wasn't going to uh, think too much. I wasn't going to put too much into it right away. I, but what we were, um, what I know now, I know you have to wand the water, right? <laughs> right? And drink. Um, I, we always drink room temperature. I don't really warm it up. That's just me. Um, but I usually use um, in our office, we wand a bottle like this, if everybody can see it. And you can get these at Ikea, like for $3, you know? So, and they look nice too, sitting up around the office with the little, uh, we all also have glass uh, cups. We don't use the paper cups. And I thought that was very important also. So that was one of the things um that we can talk about i really think wanding the water before and after the basic protocol is so so important we have you can get a picture like this can you see that yeah, yeah. That, that, that. we can see it there it is that's a nice one but um so anyway we wand the water i have taken these bottles that you can get delivered from um from the water company. This is the Mountain Valley company. But anyway, and then I got thinking, you and I got thinking about color. So we can go do that after we look at this um, chart right here, the basic chart. But so um, the first one is the palms of the hand. And if you look at hand therapy and hand acupressure points, it will hit every, every, um, point in the every organ in the body and that's so important I think it feels so good to have your palms 
heated up with the wand, but it also is, it also is touching every organ of your body. Here. Do you want me to show the hand one right now? Yeah, yeah if you can, yeah. Sure. Then we can go back to the other one. Beautiful. Look at us, you guys. I just wanted to, Kim wanted to show this on the hand because part of, you know, we ask, well, why are we doing this whole basic protocol? What's it actually doing? And that's why, you know, when Kim looked at it, she was like, wow, like this is opening all the channels. I mean, you're getting everything. So again, I'll go ahead and we'll talk about the hand a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, I'll just um, do the palm of the hands of my patients. And um, somebody, somebody asked me, well, do you do it after you put in acupuncture needles? Is it at the end of the treatment? Is it at the um, beginning of the treatment? I sometimes just go with my gut, but I love it at the beginning of the treatment because no matter what, if you look at all, everything that's in this protocol, it hits every organ of the body, it balances the patient, gets my patient ready to have acupuncture. But that's what I do in my practice. Um, just like if you go back and you look at the um, chart and tells you what acupuncture point is closest to the protocol. You want me to go back? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. let me go back then. Sorry, you guys, we have to go back and forth with this. So Alrighty. Okay, so um, like so, right? The sec the first thing you did the palms, and you've done every organ in the body, and then you do the bottom of the feet. Well, at the bottom of your foot, right there, there's a lot of reflexology points that I didn't even go into. But one, this is one of my favorite acupuncture points, and I never needle it because it's not that comfortable, but um, kidney one is that right there. And that's your life force in uh, traditional Chinese medicine. It's great for the disposition. So you're getting your patient ready. You're getting yourself ready when you do it yourself. You're, it's good, great for dizziness and headaches or loss of voice. Uh, neuropathy, it's a great um, area for neuropathy. So also fear. So, um, you know, they they were new knew what they were doing when they pointed to these acupuncture points or points for the protocol. Then you have bladder forty, which is behind the knee, and bladder forty soothes the, all the sinews and helps lumbar and knee pain, obviously, and discomfort and hip movement. So it's doing the same same thing, abdominal pain even for uh, vomiting or diarrhea. So that's a really wonderful point if, if you have some of that going on. And then you look at um, the groin area, which of course it's all your, um, it's the closest to spleen 10, not exactly where those dots are, but you also are hitting near spleen 10 and that's for, uh, for eczema, you could, you know, Ooh. You could do that for eczema, or you could do that for um, uh, pain on the inside of your thigh. So that's a great point for that. And then you have the heart one, which is under the armpit. If anybody's familiar with um, emotional freedom technique, you know, that's one of the acupuncture or points that you do tap. And heart one, it, it's anything that you've got to do with the um, pain in the ribs or it loosens the chest. You know, some so many times we are so uptight within our daily life, you know, and you have, and you just are, are grunting around and you aren't relaxing. Well, this is a great point for that. And then you have, um, <laughs> I don't know what Deborah Crookshank is doing here, but she's all she's having a good time here with it. <laughs> right, right. I don't, I don't know. So anyway, keep going. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got you've got um, this a small intestine sixteen that's a long neck. In fact, I just used that today. I was having some neck pain, and it was going into the ear and the top of my head, but. So I was wanding today like crazy, but this 
acupuncture point that's near where they're telling you to wand, it can work on the lymph. Of course it can, but it also nourishes the heart and it's good for tinnitus. And you brought that up Renee yesterday about tinnitus that there you go. That is the, the point that's good for that or rigidity of the neck when you can't, you know, we sleep wrong or we fall asleep on the couch or we fall asleep, you know, with the dogs and cats all over us and things like that. And then you've got the, the upper back and that's wonderful. That's a nourishing body nourishing point, but that's for stiffness and headache and, and uh, prolapse. You know, a lot of, of us have prolapse, whether, whether it's hemorrhoids or whether it's prolapse of bladder or um, whatever. And um, so that's a great point for that. And then you have the head point number eight and that's um, what we call do 20. And that's again for prolapse and dizziness. And then you have the number nine, and that's the closest to, uh, for our hemorrhoids point. <laughs> but it can also, it can also align the uh, cervical spine for you. And then the back, we call that the back shoe points. And that goes down every, again, every organ of the body. So again, um, there's a disclaimer down at below that says, if you have high blood pressure, just don't blow on number eight. So that makes sense, right? We don't want heat to come up here. And also um, you wouldn't wand up the back points that, um, see where it says blow downwards. And then what you do, you drink more water. More water. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a beautiful protocol. And we always do that the first thing. And then we go to points of uh, discomfort. So and, can let me ask you, Mia, I'm going to interrupt you sure. for a sec because I have a question, Hen. So when you're wanding, um, do you like stay in one point or do you move around? Do you move like, like I tend to do a little bit, yes. but especially if I'm using heat, it's too much for me on one yes. point. So go ahead. Yes, definitely. I, I never stay at that one point. I always, you know, go counterclockwise, um, believe it or not. Okay. And then when I, if I'm ending the tree, if I'm going to end the treatment um, with this, I would do clockwise, but that's just, part of our medicine that's pretty crazy to go into right now okay so if i'm understanding then when you first start let's say we do the two minutes on each palm so you would start and you would go counterclockwise yes, around I do. Mm -hmm. and then like maybe the last two repetitions then you come back clockwise right exactly okay. yeah. all right and you do that with the feet too so uh -huh. counterclockwise and then clockwise to finish right exactly Beautiful. OK, behind the knees, that's really interesting um, because you weren't really necessarily mentioning lip, but there sounds like there's a lot of cool stuff to be done here. So would you do the same thing even here, counter and then clockwise? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Now, you know, a lot of times um, some people, if they own the wand, they can't seem to reach behind yeah. and, and move it. And I know people that put it on the um the little holder, the blow dryer holder, and actually move move with it. They kind of stand in front of it, move with it. So it, it works. It's you're still getting something from that technique. Absolutely. Now, what I have said, the same thing. I say this too with the back. So I want to make sure that that sure. you would agree with me. It just makes intuitive sense to me in that the wand is able to penetrate in thirty centimeters. That's far. So yes. if somebody absolutely couldn't get behind the knee, maybe they're just you know they don't have that mobility. I tell them go from the front again yes. because it goes all the way through. So the front and the back, it's, you're going to catch that same thing with the blowing on the back. So I just lay down on my back and I'll just go downwards from the front. And I just I shut my eyes and I just really like feel it. I try to feel it in the back and you sure. absolutely can. Sure. Yes. That works beautiful. Yes. In fact, with the bladder 40, when you said front of the knees, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of people will have. Uh, knee pain, but it also goes around to the back. But if you do the front of the knees, in fact, my um, son-in-law had knee pain. And that's when Cheryl came up to St. Petersburg with the 
the uh, blower mm -hmm. and um, we just did the front of his knees that day. And when he came over to the house to have that, that done to him, of course, he wants one for Christmas. So um, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, um, and you know, he, he had such great results. I mean, it was, it, that was the, that was the thing that uh, made me want to uh, research more on this and also buy one right away. If, if it, if it worked on him and he's such a naysayer and he does not really believe in any kind of um, medicine other than, you know, the old time Western medicine, that mm -hmm. if he was actually feeling a difference and he was being able to get up from the chair and Cheryl remembers him probably saying to the, everybody that was there and I had a whole class there, how he could get up without pain. But anyway, he came over and he says, you know, I think you should do the back of my knees. And I said, well, you choose front or back. And, you know, I said, do you want to lay on my couches on your tummy? Is that what you want? Or do you want, you know, your knees done? <laughs> so I explained to him, you know, it goes through. It doesn't need to, um, you know, you don't need to do the back and the front. And I don't think you do. Beautiful. I love that. So I love, I'm so happy that you really enjoy and like this protocol, because for me, I just feel like what it's doing is preparing the body, giving it those frequencies that it needs, seeing how, especially in the beginning, the body's going to absorb it, what is going to happen, and that it opens up the channels so that more work can be done. Would you explain it like that, or would you have a different way to explain that? Well, I think that's, that exactly, I think that's how you'd explain it. Um, okay. yeah, yeah. Perfect. Uh, you know, we, when we talk to patients, we talk to them like that. Um, okay. but okay. You can just, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So I know I get a lot of questions from people and I'd love to hear kind of your take on this. There's a lot of information around the temperature, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, oh, some people say, oh, you really want to use it hot and others you're going to use it cold. And um, and there's a lot of conflicting information about it, mainly in my mind, because we're all different <laughs> and right. so it can be individual preference. But how would you um, answer those questions? Well, so um, uh, so we've seen a lot of different on the on the Facebook groups, if right. you if you're in on the Facebook uh, Facebook groups. So I listen to everything everybody has to say about that. And, but I know that heat is better than cold. And that's what we feel in our medicine. And I also know that um, if in, in, in other medicines, sometimes they feel that if you put heat on, that inflames the whole self. So I will. Um, I'm at a distance, I will put on the high heat. So I get heat, but I don't have to go real close to the area. I, you know, so I'm not making them uncomfortable. A lot of my patients um, are female and during their menstrual cycle, they love their tummies done warm. You know, they like that warmth, you know, um, but then you have other people that, you know, will say, blow me, you know, do the color. I mean, do the color, do the blowing very cold and uh, well, but it doesn't really have a cold setting. No, it just no. has a lukewarm setting. I guess that's what I can call it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I actually uh, do the wand on my um, dog and, you know, he still has his collar on and um, I just make sure that when he wants his face done, but believe it or not, and I'm just going with it. You know, I have these great pictures where you can see the blue light near his face and he just loves it. He just jumps in as soon as that thing's turned on. He just jumps in between whomever I'm using the wand on. And um, but so, you know, I would say, you know, he has metal around his neck, right? He has a dog tag. So I'm I put the cool setting on him and I'm and um, so I'm thinking that I don't think we have a cold setting. So I don't think we're adding cold to the body with it. I just think that there's a hot and there's a lukewarm. Right. Very good. So again, if I'm understanding, 
you know, pretty much it's um, take it if it's in a hotter setting, you, most likely you're going to have it a little further away just yes. so that it doesn't get too hot on somebody. Sure. And then for some people, I do know they're really pretty sensitive to that heat, maybe take it away a little further. So there's no real big rule about this. It's a little bit more personal preference, et cetera. Yes. yes? yes. Not in my world. There isn't a rule. You know, we okay. always say in my medicine, warming foods and you know warm uh, not ice drinks and uh, you know room temperature water we always say that because that's better for the gut but um i don't think that with this particular blower i don't think there's a cold setting you know i don't think it's like a fan overhead i don't think of that or the air conditioning is blowing in at you so i don't think that's that's the case with this. This, Right. I would agree with you. So we know that in the blowing guides, what we are told from um, the scientists who did this, that um, for, for it, they, they came up with the four hour rule and the four hour rule, meaning that once you blow a, you don't want to take a shower within four hours and you don't want to be under, they say, you know, cold air or blowing. So of course now in the summer, whenever, you know, it's 110 degrees and people are like, what do you mean? I can't be in air conditioning. Like you have to use a little bit of sense with that. And basically, and you pretty much just said that you just don't want to be under a lot of blowing air. It's not that you don't want to be cold. You don't want to catch a chill. Right. Pretty hard to get a chill right now in most parts of the country. But anyway, just not a chill, correct? The blowing yes, of definitely. the air, the wind in your medicine is a negative um, health thing. I'll use that word. I don't have a better word for it. Right. Am I right? Yes, wind. definitely. Okay. Definitely. Beautiful. I'm gonna yes. is it okay? Can I stop the share on this one? Oh yeah, definitely. Beautiful. Okay. All right, great. Just so we can kind of see who all's there. So I love that you use the, the basic protocol first, and then you would go right into wherever it's hurting. You would just wand around, I'm assuming. Sure, sure. Yes, definitely oh. just wand around that area. And um, I don't, you know, I have a, a timer. I don't go crazy. You know, in my medicine, in my head, less is more. I'm not going to, I'm not sure not going to detox any of my patients it, while they've left. You know, I want them to love the wand. I want them to love that treatment. I want them to want to have one of their own. And so, no, I don't um, go crazy with, you know, like 20 minutes of blowing down a channel. You know, I do, the acupuncture has channels, which we're going to, we're going to have that in series two, right? right. Right, We're going to right, talk about that right. series too. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So you guys, yeah. I want to have time for questions. So if you have a question, go ahead. You can either raise your little hand, which you can do that down under reactions, or you can unmute. So right off, does somebody have a question that they'd like to ask Dr. Kim while we're on? So we have a lot of people on, so I know we're going to get some questions. So come on down. Dan. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the time and for presenting this uh, information for us. My question is, when you're blowing on high heat and you have to back off for the comfort level, right? does that minimize the penetration of the frequency? I mean, it's only good for 30 centimeters. I mean, how do you calculate that? <laughs> Get a centimeter roller. <laughs> I got one of those. Okay, see, so <laughs> you got a centimeter roller. Anyhow, um, you know, then if they were uncomfortable, if I had, if I'm going to a, for a bigger distance, or they say I need it, you know, a back off, it's too hot, then I'll go to the cooler setting, setting, which is the I'm going to not call it the cool setting. I'm going to call it the lukewarm setting. So. That would be the second setting? Yes. First setting. First, first setting. Or the first, as you're going up. Yeah, the first setting, instead of all the way away from your body as you're holding it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thanks, Dan. Um, so Cynthia said, when it says two to three minutes for each area, does it mean one minute for each hand and foot? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. That, that's how I um, treat with it. 
So, yeah. Beautiful. And so one of the things too, I see you, Lou. Thanks. If you want to un unmute yourself, let me just make a comment and then I will bring it back to you. All right. So, you know, I think too, it's so interesting, isn't it, that as our little human brains, we get this blower and we want the rules, right? We want to know, okay, we're going to do it exactly this way and exactly that way. And we stick to the rules. And then I always love it because then we always try and figure out how to get around the rules. But what I do want to say is part of the reason that there is so much conflicting information is that we're all different. There is not one of our bodies here that is exactly the same. Not one of our bodies that have the same toxic load, that have had the same bacteria, the same viruses, the same pesticides, the same accidents, the same, you get the picture, and the same life experience. So just like with our Western medicine, you don't, yes, I realize that we get our prescription drug and it says take half a, a tablet twice a day and da, da, da. but even with that, we all know how many side effects and does that one drug affect everybody the exact same way? No. And so we're giving everybody these healing frequencies and your body is going to respond so individually to you. So while we have these basic protocols, beautiful ones to start with, because as Kim explained, it's about opening up the channels and allowing the body to start to absorb it, to start to open and start to do what it needs to do to heal itself, even that is going to be a little bit different for each of us. So when you see conflicting information, instead of saying, there's some scam going on with this, how come this person says this and that person says that? Because that's most likely that person's experience. It doesn't necessarily mean they're telling you something wrong or bad, simply their experience. So just sort of understand it from that standpoint um, and keep an open mind and experiment because this is fairly new and we need to be able to just be creative with it. All right, so that being said, thanks Lou for muting when there was some noise and why don't you come out? I know you had something to ask. Okay, I'm just taking it out of the box. I just got it last night uh, or yesterday. So, um, so thanks Kim for turning me on to this. Um, I, I'm really, I gotta, I gotta study it. I'm not sure what to do, but in regards to the, to the uh, doing the water right in a glass do you do it directly into the water or and then put it in a glass container from a glass container but it has to be charged directly <laughs> in the water not through a glass glass right i know it's yeah. probably a really question a glass glass so yes you can you could pour a glass of water of you know uh, room temp water and you could go through one one glass. I've done that when I haven't. When I looked at the my pitcher and I was out and I wanted to drink some um, terahertz water, I've done that. But I usually will, especially at the office. I usually put it in this bottle and then I will blow, like pretend that this is a blower, blow through the bottle. I oh, so just you, so you blow through the. It goes through glass. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Would yeah, that it, it, it does it affect the if, if efficiency if you do it through glass or do it directly into the water? Does it matter? Does it matter, right, Renee? Yeah, exactly. It goes right through the water. It also goes through your clothes. So nobody ever usually asks that, but you can do it through your clothes. So in a clinic setting, if any of you are in a clinic setting, you don't have to have somebody take their clothes off, right? You can you can wand right through the clothes. Now, if you're by yourself, it's really nice to have no clothes on and do it direct on the skin, but not necessarily. Now, even though we said that about the glass, you do not want to do it ever through plastic. Um, you right. don't wand into metal, okay? But glass, ceramic is okay. Um, can you wand it and then put it in a metal like I have it in my in my metal cup? Yes. OK, um, that's not a problem. Yeah. So thank you. And really, it's that easy. There's not Kim pretty much told you everything you needed to know there, Lou. <laughs> OK, one, one more question. The rest of the glass. I know you, I know <laughs> I know you need to drink two glasses to do the 10 step protocol. Mm -hmm. However, can you. Let's say drink that what if you're not even doing the protocol, you just drink that water throughout the day and just be okay. And that also will take the effect, right? Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Thanks. Definitely. Thanks, Lou. If you wouldn't mind remuting yourself, that would be wonderful. 
And um, Renee Wilson, go ahead. Hi. 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 <laughs> um, I'm just basically listening to the program. Okay. Most of my questions have been answered. Great. Um, main, my main issue is that I drink the water and then I don't know how long after I drink the water should I want. It doesn't or matter. How long after I wand should I drink the water? Just drink the water and wand, and then drink the water after, and drink the water all day. Okay. It's that easy. Yeah, there's no real big rule, in other words. Although we do like, and according to the basic protocol, to drink two right before. So you drink your two, you start to wand, you drink two after. Okay, but I drink it all day. Perfect. Yeah, does so that do count for the two before wanding? Uh, you know what? Let's not make it a very strict rule. Drink a couple, wand, drink a couple after, drink the water all day. Okay. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. I'm going to go ahead and mute you. So who else? Let me just look down to see if anybody else, if anybody else wants to talk, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Karen, Karen Rumor is up and sh go ahead, Karen. Hi, Renee. Um, yes, I have two questions. One is my arms, which is what I've been hitting the most. They're very modeled. And where the red veins are like very visible at the surface when they're not usually. And I haven't done it in two days and it's still like that. It doesn't hurt. I, I just didn't know, like, is that a good sign that things are breaking up, like fascia busting and the bruise? Or is it a sign that I should lay off? So, Karen, I happen to know because you and I have been communicating that you yes. were doing a lot and a lot for a lot of time. Yes. yes. Yeah, I was doing 30 minutes twice a day on the arms right go ahead kim <laughs> then you can you see my face no 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 well, i'm back well you probably have told karen since you guys have talked and you know her i know less is more less is really more i know it's difficult in our society to believe that but it really really is it definitely is so what yeah. would be the appropriate amount of time then well Karen, if you were in my office, I would tell you, do it five, five minutes, five minutes on each arm. And then that's it. And let's see what happens. And then we can always increase or decrease, but five minutes. Okay. So increase to what, what would be the maximum you would suggest? Oh, if you would, <laughs> well, um, I would do it by one minute increments. Okay. And then see what, what happens. Yeah. So, the, okay, thank you very much. And then for the whole body in a day, what would be the maximum that you could do? Because I have a lot of other health issues too. Well, if you did the basic protocol, and I'll see whether Renee agrees with me, if you did the basic protocol two times a day, you got it. And uh, if you stay on each, um, uh, each point, I want to call it, each uh, area, then maybe two to three minutes on each area and just do okay. it two times a day because right. but then that, on top of the protocol i have injured areas so like what's the what's the maximum um maybe three minutes on an injure in an injury you know i i actually will um i can't say her name but you know she's the one that it's kind of like lex you know, and because she'll, she'll be talking to me in just a minute, it's sitting on my desk, but I'll just have her set the timer for me. And, and that's how I uh, don't go over my time. That kind of gives me a guide. So Karen, I think just to summarize what Dr. Kim is talking about is, and I, and I know, I know, believe me, you so want to heal. We all do when we're not well and we've been suffering for a long time. And so we're so used to, let's just, I'm just going to power through it. But really with this, as Kim said, I'll just repeat again, less really is more. I wouldn't worry. You did not, you did not permanently injure those veins. Oh, yeah, They're red. Yeah. I know you realize that. Um, because we're just giving the body what it needs to heal and open. But again, sometimes we do too much. 
we can overwhelm the body's elimination systems and then it needs to stop and rebound. So I'm so glad you kind of let it go a little bit, drink the water, come back small uh, and less is more. So small amount of time, small amount of time. Sometimes it'll just blow you away. Just a small amount can give you results where it's too much, it's overwhelming. So hopefully that will help you um, start back. And then, you know, just as Kim said, little increments to continue going and we'll just keep watching. And you know, and you know what, Karen, you know, I, I have to say this, I'm, I'm just starting this protocol and I wasn't going to bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up because I think it will help you. It, so you take your, take your water and you wand your water and then mm -hmm. you put it in a, in a spray bottle and you spray the water on your skin and on your arms and on your body. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing that on some of my patients' face. I wasn't going to bring that up, but um, I think it's a beautiful thing. And so you've got, that would be the gentle, graceful method instead of, and a, a wonderful method, but that would be, that would be great. But that's that whole new of what I'm doing is I wasn't going to bring it up on this one, but I thought that Karen might like it. And so. Thank you. I've actually been doing that just this week with the weather, oh, and letting my hair go curly just because there's no other choice with the humidity. And so I use a spray bottle to freshen it. And I was like, ah, why not? And I just did yeah, my Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great. See, that's what I mean. There's like so many really fun, creative ways that we can do it. When we stop thinking about it has to be this way. There's no this way. Right, That's you true. know, we can That's be true. creative with it. Um, Nancy, I'm sorry I missed this. How do you set up a wand? You know what? And and Kim said this, but I'm, and I'll um, send to you a picture too. Uh, we just take just whether it's a glass of water. I use a big water jug because I drink it all day long. I just fill it up. I personally fill it with warm water. And then you know, a lot of people get these stands and they boil them this way. To me, that's just more work than I could bear. So here's all I do. I have my big water jug. I take like a kind of a high book. This is how. This is you know. This is DIY, right? A big book. I put a little towel over it. I put my classic here and I turn it on on one. So here's my jar and here's my blower. And I just turn it on one. And quite frankly, I go away into my office and I work. I get very distracted. So how long I do it is usually longer than it ever needs to be. <laughs> and, and five minutes for a big jug, maybe one to two for just a glass of water. And you're good. You know what else we can do? Sometimes I can set up a glass here of just water and a glass here like kind of sitting and I'll have it here so that it goes right through both glasses yes. and it will wand both of them at the same time. That's what I mean, but just get a little creative. So that's how you do it. You don't have to worry about getting some stand and setting it all up and making sure it doesn't fall and all that good stuff. Um, so thanks for that. And um, I think Kylie had some a great question. Do you feel like, do you have a time of day that you feel is more beneficial um, morning or evening? And also, do we do the basic protocol forever for a few weeks? So Kim, I'll turn that over to you, um, hear how you would answer that. Okay, so, um, you know, in, in TCM, we always say that the, that all the organs go in further into the body and they, and they, they uh, heal the body or they get more chi and it goes in, you know? So that's why acupuncturists won't do acupuncture late at night. But I don't have that same feeling with this wand at all because I've done it in early morning and I've done it late at night. And late at night, it makes me sleep better. Um, and, you know, I mean, at one, two o'clock, I, I have used it too, or into the early morning. It has not made me have more energy or, or not being able to sleep. It's just had a wonderful, relaxing, um, nourishing um, feel to it. So, no. So, Kylie, you, you know, you can just blow everything. And... <laughs> And the basic protocol, how long, you know, I just kind of change it up. Like today I was, was telling you, I was doing my neck and I was doing what I needed. And then all of a sudden I do the bottom of my feet. And then I did the top of my feet. And then I, you know, I, wherever, sometimes it's what your intention is and where, and what your gut goes to where that blower goes, you know, 
that so many times as I was teaching students in, of acupuncture, they would put in an acupuncture needle and they'd say, I don't know why I even did that. It doesn't even mean that, that, that this patient didn't even tell me that they needed it. But soon it, there'll be, it'll come out that maybe that was the right point. And maybe that's the right blow on that day and that time that your body just needed. I mean, why does Mikey, a dog, think he needs his Facebook? I don't know, but maybe yeah. he does have this, this um, they call it reverse, um, reverse sneezing, but it's almost like a, a hack. And um, it's, he only does it when he gets really excited. So maybe he knows, maybe he's blowing that, you know, into his face. I don't know. So it's instinct. It's just, you know, your intention and your instinct. Oh, beautiful, beautiful answers. Um, Kylie, the one thing that I will answer about time of day too, just because I've seen a lot of different people and their experiences. And here's what I will say. Guess what? You got to check it out yourself because, well, I, I'm with Kim. Like in the morning, if I do it, oh my gosh, I love it. And it gives me energy. I can't believe it. Like now it's, you know, 8, 12. And I'm like, I'm, I'm rocking. Like my brain doesn't have fog. That's, trust me, <laughs> unusual. So that's really giving me energy. But when I do it at night, it just, just like him, it's so calming. I mean, it will just put me to sleep. Before I do a meditation, I love to wand my face and wand right here and wand the top of my head. So, I mean, amazing for that. But I have seen some people, especially when they first start and the body's getting used to the frequencies that it's opposite that sometimes people will wand at night and it will give them energy so that's going to be really individual and if that happens to you in the beginning maybe after a couple months of wanding you might want to come back and try it again and see if that rebalances you and then it makes you tired so just because that's our experience try it if it shifts for you it's just that's just your body and how your body's reacting with it Beautiful. Um, Cynthia said a lot of people are resistant to drinking that much water. How do you deal with this? I have an answer. Kim, how would you answer it? <laughs> get over it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, get over it. It, it. You know what's beautiful are the people that are not water drinkers. It seems like they want to do this protocol. And, you know, I mean, do you want to do it or, you, or do you want to help yourself or you don't want to help yourself? It's kind of right in that um frame of my mind I think and frame of mind of the right I'm I mean. with you I'll tell you one thing though and any of you can you can chime in this is I don't enjoy drinking water yes I'm a fitness health person that can tell you I hate drinking water so I understand that Cynthia but I will tell you this when you want that water and it's structured it has this beautiful, soft, silky mouth feel to it. You will absolutely know the difference. So when people say, well, how do I know if I've wanted enough? Oh, you'll know. Put it in your mouth. You can tell. It goes down super smoothly. So while I hate water and you won't really find me drinking a whole lot of water regular out of the tap, I can just drink that water all day long without a problem. So just check that out. See if you have that same experience with people. But the hydration is amazing. Just getting people hydrated. And when you drink this structured water, you actually hydrate. You know how we would normally first thing in the morning, you get up and it's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, do the flush of the body and you drink a big glass of water and like three minutes later, you're peeing it all out because that water is not getting absorbed into your cells. And so it's really not doing anything. I have so many clients like Renee, my God, I said all day long, I'm drinking water. And yet they're dehydrated and you start drinking this water and it's just amazing the difference. That's why the skin gets so nice and the hair gets nice and you just won't believe the difference just from hydrating. So I hope that that gives you a, a little bit more about that. All right. Well, we probably have time for maybe one or two more questions. Anybody else want to unmute themselves and ask something? I do. Uh, oh. Hey, Gail, so good to hey. see you. Come on out, girl. What can we answer for you? Um, I was, you had mentioned not to use it with plastics and metal, but um, so that would mean before you put the contacts in, you to, if you're going to be doing the face at all. Oh, great question. Yeah, we never wand over any type of <clears throat> implant. 
Thank you for that. So if yeah. you have, right, so you were mentioning contact lenses, right? So if you have contact lenses, absolutely, you do not want a wand with the contacts in. Um, if you have any kind of eye implant, do not wand over the eyes. But I will tell you, having them out on low heat, that first setting, just for, um, and so now Kim was telling us counterclockwise, I've been doing it clockwise, counterclockwise um, a little bit. And then on the other one, oh, it feels so beautiful. Well, and I will also tell you, we've seen some very interesting um, results with eyes with that. And I personally have gotten rid of all my floaters and I had a lot of them. And it was so weird, right? Because it wasn't like I got the wand to get rid of my floaters. But, you know, pay attention to all the different things that's, that start showing up that you didn't intend, right? Yeah. That started to happen. So I went outside one day and I'm like, I'm like, wait a second, where are my friends <laughs> in my eyes? <laughs> They're not moving all around anymore. I was like, wow, I got rid of them. So great question. Do you have another one? I do. Um, I think you were talking about this before the um, Zoom started. Oh. And it was about the skin and um, crepiness and all that kind of maybe changes with hydration. It absolutely course, has it certainly doesn't cure, but you know. It helps, Gail, it helps. <laughs> now I will tell you that Kim is, um, she is an esthetician extraordinaire and she will be going into, I think probably some more, one of the educational things we'll do or probably will just be on skin and she's done some amazing work. But Kim, would you say too, yes, the hydration and the blowing would make a difference? Definitely. It's the same thing. You know, we need to moisturize our inside of our body. So we have our outside of our bodies moisturized. Right. right. So, um, but putting moisture inside will allow the less crepiness. And also it, it, there's a research that says that when you um, take in more water, you're actually feeding collagen that's in, adding collagen to the face. Once collagen is activated again, uh, as we age, then definitely, you know, your body, your, not your, well, your body too, but the face and neck gets more toned and then the wrinkles get, can get less. Okay. So, yeah. Got it. That's you good. What, Thank you. And you know, what's interesting is I read a study recently. I, I didn't know this, you guys, and I don't, maybe this will be interesting to you, but when we're first born, babies are about 70% water. And as we get older and older, like over 50 and older, they say we end up at like 40% water. So I kind of like to say like, as we're aging, we're drying out. <laughs> we're getting drier exactly. and drier and more brittle and more wrinkled and more dried out. So the hydration, I think that's probably one of the big reasons why I just feel like so like I'm getting a new life back because just from the hydration. So, I mean, you know, I think we can, t at least I always have kind of taken that water thing um, for granted, right? And didn't really realize because I didn't have this felt sense of what it could feel like when you're really cellularly hydrated, not just yeah. drinking a lot of liquid all day, but actually having those cells hydrate. So um, yeah, um, it makes a difference, Gail. I can't wait to tell okay. you, I want to do a little before and a little midway and we're never after, right? But keep going. That's on, right. On those pictures that we can see, which is Thank such you. a great idea. And thanks okay. for that. Um, Magda asked, um, is anything changing with my visual acuity? No, I don't know, Mon, if it's um, placebo. And even if it is, I don't care. I believe in placebo effect. I swear, I do think that it is making my eyes a little bit clearer. Um, I thought I would do it maybe another month and then go for an eye exam and just see <laughs> what I think is happening really is. Um, but we have heard other people um, have claimed that that's definitely happened. So um, certainly kind of fun. Uh, Monica, should a mesh not be wanded over? That's a great question. Kim, how would you answer that? Would you have a thought? A mesh? Yeah, so not stuff. like, you know, we think metal, not metal, because mesh right. is but metal. Like to, to like a fallen bladder and they've done our hernia mesh. Well, it, you, it'd be wise to ask your physician what was the um, type of mesh that they used. You know, sometimes they use a cloth, you know, I mean, it's actually cotton or it's, but if it's metal, no, you know, if it has any kind of metal in there, no, not at all. 
Okay, beautiful. That's a beautiful. Um, thank you. I'm glad I wouldn't have thought to ask that. Thanks. Thanks, um, Monica. Great question. So for those of you that might not know that rule, we don't wand over any kind of implant. That's what she was asking. So we were talking contact lenses obviously can be taken in and out. Um, even stents, if somebody has a heart stent, yes, you can still wand. Just don't wand right over that area approximately where you think that <laughs> that stent might be. But my goodness, as Kim showed, you know, we want the hands, we want the feet, we want around the ears, etc. You're still hitting those points. So not to think you're not getting really good um, cardio, a benefit that way as well without that. Um, how about wanding over a hernia repair? Hernia repair typically has, I don't know, Kim, what would you say? I'm not that no, familiar. Yeah. Sometimes Thanks. they use the mesh. Yeah. So we just have to figure out what the mesh is. Okay. You know, Beautiful. but again, you know, let's say that if you do the back, you're not wanting over the front, right? Ah, very good. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. What about wanting over a metal pin? No, no metal pin. So sorry, Nance. All around it, not right in it. Because um, again, think there is some heat in this that's metal. You don't want to heat the metal. You don't want it expanding. You don't want any issues. So I would say no to that. All right, you guys, we have time for one more. If you have one more question, plastic chin implant, I wouldn't. I still wouldn't. I know it's not metal, it's plastic. Here's my answer to that. The company has been very specific, do not want over implants. So I'll leave that then up to you, right? I personally wouldn't, but it's up to you. Okay, so you know that was, that is a rule rule. All right, you guys. Well, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Um, it has been fabulous. And I hope that you learned a few things. And we are going to do this again. Um, as I said, Kim and I, um, we just, we have so much fun doing these together. And there's just so, she has so much to share. And, you know, again, doing the BRASIC protocol, we wanted to start with that in the water because that's where we all start. And as Kim said, it's just, you're hitting everything. So it's, it's just a beautiful way to go. And you'll know that, that you're safe and, um, and you're gonna get a beautiful result. So Kim, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead fun. and stop, stop the recording. Yay, you guys.